my name is Trip Borman, and in this episode of Sumi VC, I sat down with Ryan Croft, co-founder and CEO of Pacto, a Mexico City-based integrated ordering and payments platform for restaurants and bars with a mission to power the cashless economy. Ryan is also an investor in a number of startups and an entrepreneur in residence at Georgetown University. We discuss what it's like to live in Washington, D.C., but travel very frequently to build Pacto in Mexico with his Mexico City-based team. Why Ryan is bullish on Latin American technology, Ryan's time as a baseball scout in the Dominican Republic, and what Ryan would tell American founders about founding in Mexico. We discussed all this and more in this episode of Samia VC. Okay, Ryan, can you start by telling the audience a bit more about your work history up to and including your current role founding Pacto? Definitely. And first trip, just want to say thank you for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm glad we made this connection through the Georgetown community. So my name is Ryan Croft. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Pacto. We're a Mexico City-based uh, software and payments company. And my background's a little bit different, I'd say, than your, your average entrepreneur. Perhaps I was born and raised in the D.C. area, in Northern Virginia. I got a degree in international business and Latin American studies in Spanish. Uh, from James Madison University in the U.S. And, you know, during my time um, at university, I had the chance to, to live and work in Spain and really, I think, just got the bug and the travel itch of living in Spain, living with a family, speaking in Spanish, thinking, you know, international travel or, or living abroad is possible. So the moment that I graduated, um, I took the sort of unique step of just moving overseas. And I lived in the Dominican Republic um, 2006 to 2008. So for two years, I lived in the DR on an island um, and had a blast. It was a, an interesting experience started by just volunteering, working at an orphanage of all places with the U.S. Embassy family. And that kind of morphed into a couple different roles and a couple different experiences. Love living in the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean. Um, and I noticed that a lot of people love baseball. So um, had the chance to be an independent baseball scout and uh, I'll go into more detail on that later, but spent two years in the DR and then that transitioned into um, my own adventure travel company. So I used to lead adventure travel tours for groups of people, anywhere from two to 22 people for five years. And it was the ultimate lifestyle business, you know, gave me the chance to travel the world. And my focus was Latin America, the Caribbean, Central America in particular, a bunch in South America and Europe. But, you know, I've, I've been to 50 countries in my life and I speak fluent Spanish. And I think a lot of that um, was thanks to that time. The name of the company was Croft Global Travel, my last name. Um, and it was really, it was really a lot of fun. Um, and I was in my 20s. So then uh, around 2013, um, I met uh, my co-founder for my last company, Transit Screen. His name's Matt Kaywood. And he uh, had a degree from Harvard in computer science and a PhD from UCSF in San Francisco. And he and I started a company uh, with a simple, simple premise, which is the world at the time was really urbanizing and people wanted to live and were living and working in cities. But the data for transportation was very disparate and hard to find. So we would aggregate information for mass transit. So uh, buses and trains and ferries and streetcars as well as all this emerging transportation that was really taken off at the time. So at the beginning in 2013, we moved to San Francisco to start the company. You got to remember, this is back when Uber was just starting, Lyft, bike share services were taking off, car sharing had been around, but it was really taken off. And then uh, scooters and uh, shared bikes and, and e-scooters were really um, sort of starting to explode. So what the company did and does is aggregate all this disparate data and bring it into one central location into a variety of products. And the first being Transit Screen, the name of the company, which is a data visualization in the lobbies of buildings, um, but mostly real estate high rises in major coastal cities. So um, experienced really fast growth, nearly double, 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 double the company in revenue for four straight years. We raised some outside capital and um, we just grew in this real estate sector. So it was a prop tech company, um, offering a bundled sort of packaged uh, software as a service enterprise SaaS type model. Um, then we expanded into corporate workplaces. So a lot of the major Fortune 500 companies were customers and uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to travel the world with the, with the company and um, really fun exploring 
um, China and, and the Middle East and, and Europe through this experience. And um, ultimately, you know, when COVID came, it was time to sort of take a step away. And um, I moved to the board of directors and uh, took some time to sort of revisit uh, Latin America through this experience um, that I had before. And I joined Georgetown as an entrepreneur in residence in 2020. Um, I joined two different uh, cohorts of um, like a on deck and a uh, fellowship called Latitude. And then uh, ultimately brought me to start Pacto, which is about a year ago today. Could you tell us more about what problem Pacto solves and how you guys solve it better than anybody else? Yeah, no doubt. So Pacto, as I mentioned before, is a software and payments company focused on restaurants and bars in Mexico uh, with an ambition to expand throughout broader Latin America. So really, what's the problem today? Anyone who's been to Mexico, uh, restaurants and bars, I think, are some of the, the best places in the world for food. Uh, the problem is the experience as a consumer, the experience when you try to check out are less than desirable. It's traditionally been a cash based society. And also the management of a restaurant, I think it really, it's different based on who owns it. So what we found in our uh, research, there's about 600,000 restaurants and bars in Mexico. So there's more bars and restaurants in Mexico per capita than the United States. And what's interesting about that cohort is uh, only 3% of those bars and restaurants in Mexico are, are international chains or uh, sort of multinationals. And primarily, um, they're non-digital, so they don't have um, integrated um, point of sale and payments. So when you have the experience of going to, say, a taqueria, you talk to a server, you order, and they put it into a point of sale. But when it's time to pay, they go and get a bank terminal, which is completely decoupled and not integrated with the point of sale. So uh, we found other models around the world that, that integrates these two together. And Pacto is really leading the charge to uh, bring a all-in-one integrated solution for them, uh, the restaurant owners, uh, to, to manage the restaurant and manage the payments in one one single location, which is which is very important. If you were going to speak to a restaurant owner and try to get them on Pacto, what would be their biggest concern that you found might they might say based on your research reaching out to them? Yeah, like I said, all restaurants are different, right? And the owners are different. Many of them consider themselves artists, and they are. You know, the food and the cuisine in Mexico is world class. Um, so not everybody thinks of it in the same way. Some people think of it as, I'm an artist. Uh, either the way that the restaurant is laid out or the food or the drinks um, is a work of art. And maybe efficiency or business is second. Other restaurant owners are the opposite, where they truly care about inventory management and labor efficiencies and uh, how do you maximize every dollar? But I'd say in general, um, they want to grow their business and they want some all-in-one platform. So the number one concern that people would have is I might have six or eight different technologies or platforms that I have to use to operate my business. How do I bring these all in one? <laughs> how do I just have one single interface or one single platform that I can use that can lower my costs and increase revenue? So generally, um, one of the challenges though is switching. If you have a point of sale or payment system, changing anything, any behavior is hard. So trying to calm their fears and say, no, actually switching is not very hard. We can make it pretty painless and simple. And once you get to the other side, uh, or if you go from cash only and paper and pencil to a point of sale like ours, um, the world is much better. We have you know, lower costs for you. We have increased revenue through digitization and ultimately a more efficient way to run your business. How are you getting more restaurants to come on Pacto? Yeah, so it's a combination, right? We, we just launched really uh, with the full all-in-one point of sale in the last two months. Um, we have a very large waiting list already from people that have seen press on us or from our sales outbound sales channels. Uh, a lot of it's referrals and word of mouth. Um, when you work with a big restaurant group or even small restaurant groups, generally, if they're using it at one location and they like it, they're going to expand. And restaurant owners also talk to one another and they see what's out there in the market and they're very social. So I think word of mouth is definitely a key driver. Um, you know, one of our co-founders, Rodrigo Curry, comes from the banking world, but he also comes from the restaurant world. And Rodrigo, um, in the last year, started a restaurant in Baja. So having the 
sort of first person uh, walkthrough of what a restaurant owner goes through and the painful process that is today. Um, that's helpful to learn and get into the psyche of a restaurant owner to say, you know, what are they really looking for? What are the, the key drivers that would get them to say yes or to accept Pacto? So overall, you know, in general, um, we use a variety of channels and starting to really explore some top-down partnerships with large organizations in Mexico as well, like financial institutions. And we think that that's really going to drive a lot of growth in 2023 going forward. How did you go about funding for Pacto? Yeah, uh, so we started the company uh, last August and started fundraising August and September, primarily in 2021. Uh, started with friends and family, ultimately ended up raising almost $2 million in a pre-seed round, six seed funds. I'd say half are in Mexico or Latin America. Half of our seed funds in the pre-seed round were in the United States, in San Francisco. Um, but ultimately, I think we have a good story, a good team. We have the right product in a very big market. So, um, you know, talk to a lot of people, even pre-launch, and I think Something that's very appealing, which is hard to find, is a great team with a good product and go-to-market strategy in a really, really big market. And, you know, we'll talk more about Latin America or Mexico as a market, but I just think both me personally as an investor or just seeing the world and the way that things are, are, are changing rapidly, Mexico and Latin America are really well positioned to grow over the next five to 10 years. So finding technologies or finding platforms that can help a lot of people and be that intermediary between consumers and um, and the, the small business owners, I think is a really good place to be. And we've seen it work in other markets and we're trying to find that tropicalized version of the product that can really work locally. I love that. I'm gonna follow up on the geographical piece. Um, where do you split your time and where's your team geographically located? Yeah, so I personally have a home and a family here and three kids in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, I spend a lot of time in Mexico. So personally, one to two weeks out of a month, I'm traveling and spending time in Mexico City. Been to Monterey a few times in Baja this year, probably about a dozen trips to Mexico just this year alone. Uh, my co-founder does the same. He lives in San Francisco, but has been spending a week or more per month in Mexico City. And then our third co-founder, Rodrigo Curry, is from Mexico and is based in Mexico. So he's there uh, full time, splitting time between Mexico City and La Paz. Um, overall, the team, we're 20 people today. 70% of Pacto lives in Mexico today. And the majority of that team is in product engineering and, and design. So we're a product heavy company, Mexico heavy. And I think it's important to to be in market. So we spend as much time as possible with merchants and with the team in market as we can. Could you tell us more about why you chose Mexico City specifically to found Pacto? And then what it what's it like being in that tech ecosystem down there in 2022? Yeah, um, I mean, I think Mexico City is a very, very appealing place to start a business. It's very big, for one. When you have 20 million plus people, one of the largest cities in the world, and restaurants and bars, there's hard to get an exact number, but about 50,000 restaurants and bars, just Mexico City, huge. It's also one of the premier uh, food destinations in the world. So restaurants and bars are extremely popular with international tourists and the food is good. Um, so we just see in general, Mexico City and Mexico, huge market um, and, and un, untapped in many ways. As I mentioned before, it's also not a very uh dense like multinational chain kind of location so there's a lot of mom and pops which which is a good thing and then the other piece is we didn't really see that there's a clear leader in this segment in this point of sale and, and integrated payment segment so it was a natural place to start there are direct flights from the us and there's also just a lot of international tourists that come and they're coming for business or coming for pleasure and they have a certain expectation for service and technology and their ability to pay digitally uh, with digital wallets or credit cards. And, and they want that acceptance rate to be high. So overall, Mexico City is a great market for Pacto. As a tech ecosystem, couldn't be happier. I mean, I really think Mexico City has the stamp in many ways beyond Brazil as the, the headquarters for tech startup entrepreneurship in Spanish-speaking Latin America. 
again, proximity to the United States and international destinations, just a big market, deep, deep labor or talent pool. So a lot of companies hiring or even letting go means that there's a lot of workers ready to to step up. I mean, we've just been blown away. We'll put a job posting up and get hundreds and hundreds of applications, you know, even in the first couple of days for each job posting that we we promote. So deep labor pool, very talented, um, massive, massive market, just a fun place to be. I love it. I'm going to totally shift gears. Could you tell us about your time as a baseball scout in the Dominican Republic? Yeah, it's definitely different. Uh, this was 2006. I was in my early 20s. I just left uh, university and you know, I was living in the Dominican Republic. And if there's one thing that every Dominican is obsessed with, it's baseball. It is the national sport. And I got pulled into the, the fever. Um, I was an independent baseball scout. So really what I would do, I would go around the island in a small Toyota Corolla. And I was meeting um, prospects, you know, Dominican baseball players from 15 to 20 years old. And I was representing them. So I would take them, train them, and then bring them to professional major league academies all over the island from the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Mets, the Cubs, the Marlins, the Nationals. And it was a wild time. This is really before uh, Major League Baseball cracked down and had a little bit more regulation. So there was a sort of an underworld of, of a lot of different scouts that were some not uh, completely above board, unfortunately. Um, and I was just sort of learning to to survive and just trying to help these players get signed. A few of the players that I represented went on to to play, um, but I was I was long gone by that point. I mean, at one point, I think thirty to forty percent of the minor leagues were Dominican Republic nationals who played. And you know, a lot of thing that something that a lot of people don't realize is how long it takes for someone to get to the major leagues. It could take five years if you're fast. Ten, twelve years is the normal route from signed at seven years old in the major things. So uh, an incredible experience. You know, I definitely uh, learned a lot in the process, just how to do business and, and you know, things to avoid. But I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, and, you know, it's kind of fun to watch some of these games now and see names and players that of uh, people that I, I work with in the past. I love it. I love it. Uh, one of your investments is in Miami-based Ola Invierte. What are your thoughts on Miami as a tech city? Yeah, look, I mean, I've been down to Miami quite a bit, um, even in the last year. I think it's an incredible city. I think every city um, sort of has its its uh, its focus area. Clearly, fintech and crypto are the words, buzzwords in Miami. Um, a lot of people call it the gateway to Latin America, which is, of course, true. Um, you know, we looked pretty hard at either Miami or Mexico City as where we wanted to start Pacto. I think Miami is great, um, but really we felt like Mexico City was was the right city for us. There's a lot of great things going on in Miami. There's a lot of energy, um, and I think it's a fun place to visit. Uh, but ultimately, when we looked at both, Mexico City just jumped off the page as where we wanted to have our, our headquarters going forward for Pacto. What would you tell an American tech founder or VC uh, about something they wouldn't know about Mexico or Latin America? Yeah, I get this question a lot from, you know, people in the States or you you sort of hear why Latin America or why Mexico? And I think the question um, is valid, uh, but there are a couple of just incredible statistics that you can't overlook. It's a huge market. You know, roughly 9% of the world's population lives in Latin America, um, but it's just still so underserved by technology. And I think it's one of the, the biggest and last markets to truly uh, digitize that needs to digitize not just what we're doing with Pacto, but every sector, transportation, healthcare, financial services, and uh, pharmaceuticals, every, every single aspect of life, travel and tourism needs to be you know modernized in a good way. And I think it just has a tremendous upside. A lot of people don't know that it's Mexico is one of the most visited countries on earth. Last I checked, it was the seventh most visited country in the world. You see 40 million international visits a year. It's one of the top destinations for digital nomads in Mexico City from San Francisco or other maybe expensive cities like Brooklyn and New York or Chicago and L.A. 
And also a lot of retirees live there. It's a, it's a great quality of life. Mexico is beautiful. Mexico city in, in general. And a lot of people don't realize that um, it's a great place to live. You've invested in many Latin American startups. What is your personal investment thesis when investing in the region? And could you tell the audience about one of your favorite investments? Definitely. Uh, I'm very bullish on Latin America over the next five to 10 years. So it's a good place for angel checks. Uh, I've invested in about five companies now in the area, um, in Mexico, Colombia. And for me, it's all about the founders. At this stage, um, so much can go wrong. So you're betting on the person as much as anything. Um, probably my favorite investment, uh, put uh, angel check into a Monterey, Mexico-based company in ed tech space called Vinco, V-I-N-C-O. It's just an incredible founding team. One of the founders is from Georgetown, you would like to hear. And they're just tackling a big issue, and that's upskilling workers. So large corporations who want to give a college degree to their employees, think like retail, travel, and tourism, or frontline workers. And I saw this model work. Uh, there's a company in the U.S. called Guild Education out of Denver. It's extremely, um, an extremely successful company. It's a unicorn. And I think they're on a path to go IPO. And to me, Vinco just jumped off the page. It's just a great founding team in a really big market, trying to help people who say work a retail job or in tourism or hospitality. How do they get a college degree? And and really kind of turning the model on its head and having the colleges and universities um, uh, finance a lot of this. So I think it's a great company. Vinco, everyone should check it out. It's based in Monterey. There's a Georgetown connection. I think everyone should check it out. Um, my second to last question, how was your experience with the Latitude program? Yeah, so I was a Latitude founder fellow and um, also on deck, which is a similar program, maybe just a different geographic focus. But I have nothing but great things to say about Latitude, great people, an incredible network. And to be honest, between On Deck and Latitude, I would say they gave me the inspiration to start Pacto and to say, all right, getting back into being an entrepreneur and a founder again is the path for me. Um, I like starting companies and being in Latitude is just surrounding yourself with other people who also like to start companies and are passionate about Latin America. I've kept a lot of the same connections from that time and Really, really love the people that run it. Um, I think Gina and Brian do a tremendous job in getting the community together. So nothing but great things to say about Latitude. I love it. They retweeted my last LinkedIn and Twitter. So I like Latitude because of that. Um, finally, I have to ask Peter Thiel's famous contrarian question but with a uniquely Samia VC twist. What important truth about Mexico or Latin America do very few people agree with you on? That's a tough question. Um, but for me, I think really what it comes down to is that you can successfully grow a company in two places at once. And, you know, I, obviously that's maybe controversial for some people, but we started Pacto in COVID and our team is hybrid remote out of necessity. We had no other choice. You know, I based here, founder in Mexico, co-founder in San Francisco. It was just the nature of the world then. I just think the world has changed and so much can be done remotely. You can be very efficient and productive remote. You know, I have, I live here in the U S primarily I have a family here, kids in school, but one to two weeks out of a month, I'm in Mexico city. And I really like that balance. I think it's important to learn from other markets. It's important to know what other companies around the world are doing and then tropicalize it and apply that to the local market. And that's what we're doing with Pacto. And of course, we couldn't really operate or do any of this without a strong support system. All three of the founders, we have incredible spouses and families who support us. Uh, I just think overall, this trend since COVID, it's just not going away. It's not going back to the way it was and everyone's commuting to a single office. You can raise capital without meeting people in person. You can close business and, and hire people without meeting people in person. But I think meeting people in some cases is really critical. And that's building the culture of your team or closing a big deal. There is nothing that replaces a face-to-face -face for those kind of meetings, but a healthy balance of the two is really important. You can be productive and work from home and be very productive in, in market as well. So I think that's something that not a lot of people see, but it's the change, it's the way that changing work in the future. What a great answer. Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the Samia VC podcast today. Trip, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. 
Thank you for watching this episode of Sami VC. My name is Trip Gorman. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you view the podcast. And don't forget to check out our newsletter, DealFlow LA, which can be found by going to dealflow.la.